Okay, guys, we're back here for another day with BA Performance. Yeah, uh, we're Marshall. Be, uh, working on my E92 again today, doing some more uh, maintenance. Uh, getting close to the end of doing all the maintenance that you gotta do when you get a new uh, 335i. Um, we're gonna be putting in a new serpentine belt. Uh, these can get worn out if they get oil on them and they can fray. And if they start to rip, it'll actually suck into the motor through the. Uh, Harmonic balancer, I believe. Right, right. And uh, goes into your timing chain and will pretty much grenade your whole motor yeah. um, if this goes bad. Uh, here is the uh, part numbers and stuff on that. And that's actually pretty cool. It's kind of like sparkly on the inside. I don't know if you can see yeah. that wow. on the new belt. Um, between like 30 or 40 bucks for this. It's thing. not bad considering. 40, maybe depending on where you get it. I don't remember, but I think uh, looking. Bav Auto. At other places, yeah. it was like twice the price. Like if we yeah. wanted to go get it, if like we at a got store. It in Napa, it's way more yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Um, and then also, we're going to be doing the oil filter housing gaskets. Um, there's a gasket on the head, and there's a gasket here where the oil cooler is. And to do that, we'll also have to do the intake manifold gaskets, which I have all those in here. This is the oil filter housing one. Uh, you can't see it, but it's in there. It's part this number is, on that one. Um, have it right here on that side. Made in uh, Germany. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one is the oil cooler gasket. Uh, there's part number for that upside down. Made also in Germany. <laughs> and these are the uh, intake manifold gaskets. There's six of them in there. And I believe our part number is right up here for yep. this guy. There's the part number and also made in Germany. Yep, yep, yep. And then oil filter cooler lines, oil cooler o ring. Yeah, the ones that go right off the lines yeah. right here. Um, I wish I'd replace those in mine. I don't know yeah. that mine are a problem, but smart to. Yeah, these are like a dollar. Um, not too bad. This one's like 10, 10, and 10. Right. Not bad at all. I mean, as far as yeah. a repair maintenance goes, this is pretty cheap to do it yourself. Right, you're looking at $900 or more. At a just dealership. Just to have like the serpentine belt chain. Right, at a dealership. Yeah, at a dealership. But. Or any mechanic probably. Well, yeah, probably may, give or take a little, but you know, so it only costs, it's, you know, it's less than $100 right yeah. there to yeah. do this simple maintenance that'll prevent your engine from basically grenading itself. And also because these are notorious for leaking. Yep. So. So yeah, we're gonna start by taking off all of the uh, covers here: the cabin filter, this water tray or weather tray, um, the air filter box, the uh, ducting to the air filter, the ducting here. Um, what else do we have to take off? Do we have to take this off? Yeah. Probably for the intake manifold. Yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, and all that stuff right there. Yeah, so we'll be taking all these off, and then uh, we'll tell you the next step after that. All right, let's get into it. Okay, guys, we got uh, that all off there, and uh, Matt is loosening the oil cap right now. Um, the car is not hot. Uh, we let it sit overnight. Um, this will be filled with oil yet, but most of it has drained down. Yeah, you're going to want to break the seal here though just to let it drain for a little bit yeah give it you know 10 15 minutes before you pull the cap off otherwise oil is just gonna go everywhere um, I'm gonna take this off okay, okay guys we're uh, jacking the car up from the center jacking point it's uh, right before the oil drain spot on the under tray so we're gonna jack the car up uh, get it on stands and pull off the uh, um, the under tray thing so that we can any oil that spills will go right to the floor and then we can access the serpentine belt from underneath and on top at the same time tag team it hell yeah okay so where are we at right now um basically we got all the crap off um this is loose and the oil straining we're going to take off these oil cooler lines which is one 13 mil bolt underneath 
and you can get to it with a 3 8 ratchet. Um, and also we're going to take this duct loose here. Yep, you just got to oh. put a screwdriver under this uh, ring right here, slide it up, and then we're going to work on taking out uh, the manifold. intake manifold bolts, which I believe are an 11 if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I think an 11, and those will give us, that'll give us access to this, and then we're changing the gaskets on here. Right, And we'll get to look at the valves too and see how mess, how much gunk is on them. Right, and in, it, what, the reason we take off the intake manifold is because there's one bolt somewhere tucked under here that you can't get to, or up here somewhere. We'll show you when we find it, but yeah. one of these bolts back here you cannot get to without taking the intake manifold off. It's the only reason we're doing that. You got it, or you need me to get in there. I can I can get it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. The big sausage hands don't uh yeah. When we get this oil cooler line off, we're gonna try and wrap it up with rags and kind of hold it up this way so that the least amount of oil comes out of it. Yeah, speaking of which, you might want to get some rags to prepare for that. Right, I can get some here, but... Is she loose? She will be. Okay, he's gonna try and tuck it here somewhere a little bit. We could uh, bungee strap it too, otherwise. Yeah, you're gonna want a bungee strap just to hold it in okay. place. We just split them apart. Oh, that looks okay though. It'll just slide in there. I did not know those could split come apart. I didn't know that either. Got a nice sitting pool of oil right there. <laughs> Perfect. That word, that rag worked. Stick another rag at it. I guess. Try and absorb some of it, and then try and pull it out. Still got some play in it. That one's kind of got a dry spot, so I don't know if it was leaking or not. They don't look too bad, but I don't know. Got new ones. We'll play. We'll replace them anyway. Okay, what's next? Uh, probably want to pull those rags out. Put in some new ones, and then. I can start working on taking the intake manifold off if you want to start taking the housing apart. Okay. A little nosebleed. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, for the manifold, or for the housing, uh, the oil cooler is, is it two or is it three? Uh, there's three. There's one there's here, one here, and... One at the bottom where you can't really see it. One at the bottom. Where right. 
Mine is covered in that oil way. and gunk. Yeah. That and then um, those are E10s, I believe. This one isn't a hundred percent necessary. Or I don't E12s. know. Maybe I'll take it off. Maybe I won't. But the, you just pull that out with a screwdriver and pull that off. Yeah, so uh, right there, guys, you can see the uh, where the oil and the coolant, um, they, you know, they're just separated by the gasket, so you can easily get uh, a little bit of mixture here if this gasket goes bad, and you'll get condensation and stuff building up in your motor. No bueno. No bueno. Okay, this radiator hose right here, um, a lot of people take off to get to this bolt here. And uh, these ones constantly break and then you have to buy an aluminum billet one. I don't think it's too expensive, but if you're gonna take this off, you should probably just get that. Um, but I believe that we take it off without removing this. Yeah. It's a little more difficult, but you use like one, one uh, swivel and that comes right off. Pretty sure that's how I did it. She's not like that. <laughs> I think I just did that to crack the seal, though. Right. Maybe. Why did they put it fucking right there? <laughs> because they knew you were gonna work on it, and uh, they wanted you to be miserable. You gotta just have it the wrench in here the right way. Just the right way. Like this. And then you were able to get that one. Yeah. It was, you know, sitting like this. You gotta have this. 
Exactly oh, yeah, like right. this. Because uh, I, I was pretty sure I used this wrench. It's all you now. <laughs> Perfect. That's how I live my life, a quarter turn at a time. God, you can just see, like, uh, it hasn't even gone flush no. yet. <laughs> Part. Yeah, you can definitely see there was some oil seepage out of here. Um, the mounting spot here looks really good, actually. Yeah, it does look pretty good. So, Better than mine did. Like it was. She is pretty good on it. Okay, guys, we got the whole oil filter housing off. Now Matt is taking out the two bolts that keep the charge pipe in place on the front of the motor. They're uh, T30 Torx. Um, one's kind of easy to get to, the other one's real hard. It's a little further down there. Yeah, it's a little further down and it's kind of hard to see, but it's doable. And then uh, the belt tensioner is right here. And, and right there is a T60 and you turn that clockwise to loosen that pulley. True value has the right the right socket for it. True value has the socket for that one, yep. Bottom or bottom to top? Bottom to top. Because I think there's more pulleys down there, right? I figure we might have. I don't know. I can hand it down to you. Let's get this one off first. If you get really comfortable and situated, then I'll get this on the tensioner. Okay guys, that's the serpentine belt. Uh, pretty easy. It's way easier if you got help. Oh yeah. Um, you know, get a buddy. One guy does the top, one guy does the bottom. Pretty straightforward. Uh, next, I'm going to clean off 
this surface and take the old gasket out, put the new gasket out, and put this back on. Let's get into it. Okay, guys, while uh, everything's still off, we're going to try and pull this uh, intake manifold back and change the six gaskets in there. Oh yeah, so we just got all the uh, gaskets off and uh, we're putting them back in. This definitely helps having two people too if you don't want to fully remove the whole manifold. Okay guys, the three bolts for this is uh, 14 foot-pounds and you don't want to exceed that or you will strip them out and be up shit creek. Yeah, that would not be any good. I know, that's the problem I had. <laughs> that's it. Uh, just probably double check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one I just got pretty tight, so that right. hopefully it will be tight when I... <clears throat> yeah. It got loose just from tightening them other mm -hmm. ones. I believe it. Okay, it's tight as I want to go on that one. I'd rather a little bit of oil come out than that get rounded off. Yeah. Okay guys, uh, then the oil cooler housing, um, three bolts is uh, 16 newton meters or 11.8 foot pounds. Uh, I'm just going to put this uh, gasket in there, put that on there and do that. Matt, you're going to do the... Yep, I'm working on uh, getting the nuts onto the intake manifold. <clears throat> they are size 11. Uh, they are supposed to be torqued to... Uh, 15 newton meters, for, from what I understand. Um, we'll have to convert that to foot pounds, though, because our torque wrench doesn't do newton meters. Yeah, 15, you said, so that's 15. probably like 10 ish. Next for me is uh, O-rings on the oil cooler lines and then I'll be trying to put them in there but I'll probably get Matt to do it anyway. <laughs> did you pick two on one? Did I? Yeah, why did you put two on one? Well, I guess, uh, I, <laughs> that. I totally looked at the other one and was like, okay, now I gotta do that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't. <laughs> Okay guys, the uh, oil cooler line is hooked back up. I'm going to throw in a uh, new oil filter. Um, I only got like 
200 miles on it since the last oil change, so I'm not going to change all the oil. Just going to pop the new filter in. Um, and then, after that, we got to hook up the diverter valves, uh, put the air box back on, and all the vanity cover stuff, and it should be done. Uh, we're also going with a uh, new air filter. Yeah. Yes. Then turn on. Uh, well, no, no, no. Yeah, bleed the radiator first, then turn it on. You should do that now, and we'll continue to button up the okay. plastic. Okay. Do you remember? Uh, something about having the key in the on position and hitting the pedal three times or some shit. You have to Google it, YouTube yeah. it. Okay guys, while uh, Matt's putting the dressing on this uh, beautiful thing, um, since we opened up the, took off radiator lines and took off the oil filter housing where coolant goes through, now we have to bleed the coolant system. Uh, BMW made that pretty easy. Um, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes. And so what you do is, uh, this is a stick, um, automatic's going to be different. But you uh, push the start button um, without having the clutch in so that the car doesn't start. But everything comes on anyway. Maybe the key has to be in. I had to push it twice um, and turn my heater on. So you want to turn this all the way high, all the way high, all the way high, and then all the way low on the fan. And then you hold the gas pedal down for 10 or 15 seconds. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000, 11, 1,000, 12, 1,000, 13. Okay, Matt says it's working now. Um, he can hear the water pump going. And uh, if you want to confirm that the water is pumping, you can just come over here and you can hear it. Or you can take off your cap here. And with the cap off, oh, I can't see it. Oh, you can see it. Let's wait for it, maybe. And then you can see the water coming. The coolant coming through from this uh, little pipe right here. After about 10 minutes, it'll stop making noise and then it is uh, fully bled. And then uh, might have to add coolant. Oh, yeah, you can see there's a little bit of oil in there from the gasket leaking. You want to add coolant to the so that bubble sticks out a little bit. She's really going now, huh? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. It's not on focus. There we go. Where does this fourth one go? That one, that one, that one. It's right there in the corner, but way down deep. I see. Yeah, no, you don't have uh, to put four in yours, but. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna finish putting the stuff on here. Uh, we also got a uh, cabin filter, which goes right there. I have all 
the bolts are mine. <laughs> I got all most of the bolts for mine, even though they just kind of fall in. Yeah. I was just gonna say, I just see it right. Get that wound up in the fucking belt. I do. One is your ambient temperature sensor, I believe. Oh, okay. I don't know what the other is. Okay guys, we got everything back together. I'm gonna pop the hood again. And uh, we're gonna start it and make sure we don't have a bunch of oil leaking out. And let it warm up so we can check the oil level. Okay guys, some uh, smoke when you start up is going to be normal, uh, there's fluids and new rubber and kind of stuff so you can expect a little bit of smoke or steam to come off. Uh, everything seems to be running pretty good right now. So far so good? Yeah. Seeing evidence leaks. Um, we lost a little bit of coolant, barely anything. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a little bit of oil off. Uh, you won't really know until the oil cooler opens itself. That's when you start to notice some drastic uh, not so like oil difference. Otherwise, though, I would say this is uh, successful. Yeah. yeah. Success again. See that shirt over here. Alright, guys, that's uh, everything you know to need to know to change your uh, oil filter housing gasket and your serpentine belt. Pretty straightforward, takes a couple hours, not too bad. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, like, subscribe, comment, uh, tell us what you think, uh, tell us about your cars, uh, tell your friends. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, peace out.